Hello, Oddist fans. Today we have a thrilling lineup for you as we delve into the miraculous survival stories of 11 art masterpieces that nearly bit the dust. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and be a part of our Oddist squad, where we unravel history's quirkiest tales. Drop us a comment about any peculiar historical anecdotes you want us to cover. First on our list is an almost tragic tale of digital mishap. In 1999, Toy Story 2 faced the brink of obliteration. A single error caused almost the entirety of the movie to be wiped off Pixar's servers. Galen Sussman, the movie's supervising technical director, had a near-complete copy of the film on her home computer. She had been working from home while on maternity leave, and this fortuitous circumstance saved the day. After her computer was carefully transported back to the studio, the film was remade into the iconic sequel we all enjoy today. The Pixar team even snuck in an Easter egg in Toy Story 4, referencing the disastrous command that had nearly tanked the franchise. Let's rewind to May 21st, 1972. A man named Laszlo Toth barged into St Peter's Basilica, his gaze fixed on Michelangelo's Pieta. Brandishing a rock hammer, Toth, a geologist by profession, attacked the stunning sculpture. Shouting that he was the risen Jesus, he was finally subdued by Bob Casilli, an American sculptor who happened to be on vacation. Despite some damages, the Pieta was restored and continues to move audiences with its tender depiction of Mary and Jesus. Ever imagine risking your life for a piece of music? Peter Wackernagel, a Berlin librarian, did just that during World War II. He was transporting the original manuscript of Bach's Brandenburg Concertos when his train came under fire. Protecting the priceless music with his body, Wackernagel escaped the train and hid in a forest until the danger passed. His brave actions preserved a monumental work of classical music for future generations. Our next masterpiece is Virgil's epic poem, Aeneid. Before his death, Virgil requested the unfinished work to be destroyed. Roman Emperor Augustus, a fan of the poem's reflections on Roman values, ignored Virgil's wishes and published it. It stands today as a masterpiece of ancient literature, a testament to the artistic foresight of Augustus. Jumping to the film world, we touch on the eerie tale of Nosferatu. This iconic horror film from 1922 was nearly erased from history due to a copyright infringement lawsuit. A single surviving print escaped destruction and found its way abroad. It was screened to an enthusiastic audience seven years later and continues to inspire the horror genre. Now let's take a moment to appreciate Emanuel Leutz's 1851 painting, Washington Crossing the Delaware. Although the original was lost in an Allied bombing during World War II, Leutz's two copies remain, enabling us to glimpse a seminal moment in American history. Moving on, we delve into the oppressive world of Soviet censorship and The Master and Margarita. After burning his initial manuscript, author Mikhail Bulgakov saw a heavily edited version of his novel Escape the Iron Curtain and find publication in France. Today, it is recognised as a pillar of world literature and has inspired music, such as the Rolling Stones song Sympathy for the Devil. Franz Kafka, a renowned writer, requested his unpublished works be burned after his death. His friend, Max Brod, decided otherwise and published them, ensuring Kafka's literary genius was not lost to the world. This raises a tantalising question. Would Kafka be grateful or furious to know his works gained acclaim posthumously? Next, we spotlight the dramatic tale of Fyodor Dostoevsky and his novel Crime and Punishment. Dostoevsky actually burned the initial manuscript of this celebrated novel, only to rewrite it into the version that exists today. What is striking is his propensity to burn his work, as he did the same for his novels The Idiot, The Eternal Husband and Demons. In the same vein, Marquis de Sade's controversial The 120 Days of Sodom narrowly escaped oblivion. He had hidden the manuscript in his Bastille cell. While he died thinking it was lost in the French Revolution, an unknown man had salvaged it, cementing de Sade's reputation as a transgressive writer. Finally, we look at The Wicker Man. This cult horror classic from 1973 was almost lost after its original reels were misplaced by the studio. Roger Corman, a film producer, had a copy, which allowed a restored version to be released. Despite the loss of Corman's copy, the film has since been released in multiple versions that approximate the original vision of director Robin Hardy. So what do you think? Do you think these works of art were lucky to continue their existence? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our Odd History.